when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. We gather on this day of Pentecost, a day of celebration, as we recall a significant moment in the story of the first disciples of Jesus, who after that event in Jerusalem would go and tell of the time when they were blessed by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to our act of online worship this weekend. I am Patrick and I'm a minister in the Methodist Church in the north and the northwest of Bristol and into South Gloucestershire. Unlike those early Christians, we are far from being in one place physically, but we gather in Jesus name. And so may we pray that as we gather remotely and in different places, that the presence of that same Holy Spirit will bring us together in Jesus name, wherever we are whoever we are, and as we seek God's help to look out for and listen for that same Holy Spirit, welcoming her with open hearts and minds, calling us, inspiring us, challenging us. And so as we wait for the presence of the Spirit to be upon us, we pray. Let us pray. Spirit of compassion, we bring you our hearts. Spirit of discernment, we bring you our choices. Spirit of wisdom, we bring you our minds. Spirit of fulfilment, we bring you our longings. Spirit of boldness, we bring you our words. Spirit of abundance, we bring you our resources. Spirit of creation, we bring you our lives. Holy and life-bringing God, we praise you, God of all time, for speaking through us in the tongues of Pentecost, for stirring our longings with the excitement of Pentecost, for uniting us with the inclusiveness of Pentecost. Even though we are full of that spirit, we confess that sometimes we struggle to understand you, to trust you as we ought to be open to your reassuring hand upon us, to see your vision for all we should do in your name. So forgive us, we pray, and allow the breath of your spirit to enliven us, to accept your forgiveness, to testify to your love, to bring your truth and simply be present within us. So fill our lives, we pray, with the enormity of this day, until the Spirit overflows in us with compassion and commitment to care for ourselves, for our neighbours and for all of creation, all in the glory of your name. Amen. We began with words from the book of Acts, telling of that day of Pentecost. And I'm grateful for Tim Baker from All We Can, who shares more of that story with us now. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the Apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 
they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Let's face it, what happened on that particular day of Pentecost is bewildering. Why was the coming of the Holy Spirit accompanied by the sound of a mighty wind? You might just hear in the background a mighty wind outside my window this afternoon. Perhaps it was simply a day like today with a gale or storm raging around. But why does it end up that day of Pentecost with people speaking in languages not previously known to them? And despite these curious and bewildering events, the whole event finishes not in confusion, but drawing on the words of a prayer that I will share later. It ends with the disciples filled with joy and with boldness to share the gospel and with the clearest sense of purpose about what the future held. So why? was the coming of the Spirit, seemingly a very unusual thing. Well, actually, I don't think it was an unusual thing. We see throughout Scripture that God's presence often elicited awe and wonder. We read the examples of Moses and the burning bush. We read of Isaiah's vision in the temple. In our Bible study just a few days ago, we were studying Saul's encounter with God on the road to Damascus. All amazing and quite dramatic events to name but a few. And so with these and others in mind, it should be no surprise for those gathered on the day of Pentecost that the appearance of God in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit should indeed be dramatic and in them to invoke and inspire similarly dramatic reactions and responses in all those present. And as we are gathered in various places and in various ways this weekend, God's people present in this time, this season, this moment, to celebrate those events some 2,000 years ago, those events seen as the commissioning, the beginning and blessing of the church, as we gather in our different ways to celebrate this moment, surely this too is a good moment to look more deeply for the same Spirit's power and work and seek God's energy and enthusiasm for our work today. To be aware once more of the awe and wonder of what can happen but perhaps even with a sense of bewilderment as we move forwards, hoping for a new sense of purpose for our role as God's people, for God's church in the world. What can we do to sense the Holy Spirit and allow her to work within us? In itself, that might be a bewildering question. Like those first disciples, we might feel we're in a place currently as we continue to emerge, we hope, from the pandemic. How do we make sense of the longer term view of the church? Indeed, the longer term view of the impact of the pandemic on the church, us, the people of God, indeed, on ourselves and indeed on our place in the world. But as we listen once more to the story of that Pentecost unfolding and as it unfolds in that Bible passage, how do we see the parallel time now unfolding for us? I'd like us just to pause for a moment and just listen to the words of a well-known chorus, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Yeah. 
So as we seek the Spirit falling afresh, coming once more to us, how do we find space to receive that holy, life-giving and confidence-inspiring presence of God, that which needs our attention? One thing I've been able to do a little of this week is to find a little space for myself and my relationship with God. I was encouraged by the time I spent in the middle of the week with some colleagues from the Methodist district here and around Bristol. We had a quiet day, or perhaps it would be better to say just a quiet few hours, because we were using Zoom and the session was just set up for a few hours, acknowledging that perhaps four hours staring at a screen may not be the best thing to do. But we had some time spread out over the middle of the day on Wednesday, just allowing ourselves some time and space with God. This time of the year typically is just a little quieter in the life of a minister. It's quieter in the cycle and rhythm of ministry in general and it was really a good time just to stop and listen to God for a little while. We were encouraged by the person leading the time just to pay some attention to ourselves, to our physical well-being, our mental well-being, our emotional and spiritual well-being. And recognising that over the past year or so, all or some or perhaps just one of those might well have been drained in some way. Just to acknowledge that some or all of those might not quite be in the right place. And to offer our thoughts about that uh, prayerfully, be that just speaking aloud in our own uh, space, of course, with God. Simply just thinking things through with God in mind. Or perhaps artistically writing it down or drawing something or doing anything else for that matter which might just be done creatively. And having done so, to simply lay those down before God. And therefore having laid them down before God to provide some space in those aspects of our lives to be opened up to the presence of the Holy Spirit in our everyday and in our current existence, sort of acknowledging where we currently are. And I found that quite revealing just as I reflected about all those aspects. As the time together moved on, the person leading us said, well, actually, as we approach Pentecost, now you've made space by putting those things down, decluttering, perhaps, tidying out the attic to use the name of a well-known TV programme. Now you have got space for God to come and inhabit yourselves, to allow God's Spirit to come within you. And as we mark Pentecost, just allow space for your being to be energised, whether that's physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and just allow God's Spirit to come back within you. And that was a really helpful just few hours. It got cut short a little bit by something going on at home, but actually it was nonetheless certainly very helpful. And as we mark this time of the church year, as we mark the coming of the Spirit at that Pentecost, it is a time to celebrate, but perhaps almost a time as we naturally do sometimes at times of the year, just to pause and to look back a little and just see perhaps where we are and how we might move forwards in hope. Many of you know that one of my roles here in Bristol is to be the Chair of Trustees of the South Bristol Church and Community Trust, uh, otherwise known as the Witherwood Centre. If you don't know Bristol, it, that's in the uh, southwest of the city, and on the site of a former church in that part of the city is now a big community centre, which does a number of things, including hosting its local church, but also hosting one or two uh, community things, including some NHS practices. One thing we've done as trustees over the past few weeks is just like I did with my colleagues the other day, just have some time aside to, in one sense, draw breath. Draw breath at the end of a really busy period for us as we collectively have been dealing with the pandemic and its impact on the centre. And we had just a moment to celebrate what successfully had happened over the past year and adapted to any number of things to give thanks for those who've contributed to that 
but then spend a little time just looking ahead, thinking about what we hope for in the next few months and perhaps into next year and perhaps even a little beyond that for the work of the Trust and the Centre. And as we did, we looked forward in hope and laid before God our hopes for the future and the hopes for the future for the centre, but also for the community it serves. In the churches in which I minister, we've been doing similar things too in various different ways over the past few months as well. And we do those in hope because we have the knowledge of the future in God's hands. And I wonder when those disciples gathered in Jerusalem for that day of Pentecost, in the weeks after Jesus' death and resurrection, what they hoped for. Time and again in the accounts after Easter, we hear that they were locked away, that they were fearful, they were worried, potentially isolated and alone. So when they gathered, I wonder whether they thought that the Holy Spirit would come in such a dramatic and life-changing moment. But actually it did. The Holy Spirit came. And in that moment, in that time, in that space, they were filled to overflowing with that Spirit and released not only of all those worries, anxieties, all those fears, but they were released so much that they were filled with boldness and courage to speak with joy, which seemed to just overflow in their conversations on that moment and in the conversations which followed. And as we celebrate Pentecost today, surely that is the good news, firstly for us. It's the good news for us individually and as God's people. But I think it's also the good news for the places in which we live, in which we work and in which we serve God. And just as God saw those first disciples as people full of potential, let us allow ourselves to sense that same spirit, to allow ourselves to be touched by her and not to hold back, not to hang on to the bewilderment, not to be fearful of being rejected or ridiculed because we share the good news of Christ. Not even the fear of not being good enough or unworthy, but allow God's potential in us to be released by the Holy Spirit within us so that we, like those first disciples, are bold and confident, not only to identify the people and places we know about who need to hear the gospel of good news of Jesus, but that we will have that same Holy Spirit within us, giving us the confidence to do so, to speak and to act with the knowledge of what God has done in our lives and bring ourselves and them and all before God. Amen. And so let us pray and I invite you to respond simply with the word come. Each time I say come Holy Spirit to join and say come. Spirit of grace we pray for your church today especially for the witness of all your people. Breathe new life into us grant us a clear vision of faithfulness. Come. Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of grace, we pray for those who suffer today, all who suffer for their faith, all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Reveal yourself to all in need with comfort and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of grace, we pray for the nations of the world. Grant to those in authority the gifts needed to speak clearly across divides, to bring healing and calm, to bring peace where there are wounds and discord. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of grace, in quietness we offer to you the people and places on our hearts this day.
come. Holy Spirit, come. In faith and in hope, we offer these prayers to you, Holy God, and through your Holy Spirit, may we be emboldened and envisioned to see your work, to hold your vision and bring your kingdom here on earth. And we offer these and all our prayers as we say the Lord's Prayer in a version of our choice, as we join together our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Before we sing our hymn, one which reminds us about a large crowd, in one sense singing together, but also written by Charles Wesley, who at the end of May 1738 felt a new sense of the Holy Spirit on his life. And then a few days later, his brother John, very much the same. And as we sing that hymn, I'd like to say thank you to members of the Festival Choir at St Peter's Pilning who have prepared and recorded for us this weekend. And to Dottie North, a local preacher from Victoria Methodist Church in the northwest of Bristol, who has prepared our written devotions this week. And please do read those. There is a link to them in the description below the video. And so we listen or sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit on the disciples with the wind from heaven and with tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel, send us out in the power of the same Spirit to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 